All right, today's lecture, 36, ways to balance an asymmetrical or informal composition. So look on page 235, and that would look to be um, a, a <coughs> composition that is not balanced. So, um, but in reality it is. Um, it looks um, somewhat informal um, because um, this isn't a picture you'd expect to see um, um, with, with the artist setting it up, etc. So it looks like it's kind of a, a real life event. Whether it is or not, I don't know. Okay. Um, so how are the different ways that this composition is balanced? All right. So there's, there's several ways that you can balance, and one of them is, in your book, size and contour. So that's going to be one of our notes. I'm going to have notes coming off all sides here. So one is... Size. We'll just do size all by itself, okay? We're going to do a separate one for that. So what do you think would be heaviest? A big object or a little object? A big object's going to appear heavier. So um, several small shapes. can balance one large shape. So let's look at our example. Did you get that? All right. Now, let's see. Do we have evidence of that in our um, example? If I do an axis here, Tell me about the shapes on this side. Big or small? Big. Are there a lot of them or just a few? Just a few. Okay, good. Thank you for answering. Now on this side, okay, are the shapes big or generally or are they little? Comparatively speaking. You see how they're smaller? Okay, what are... You know, you're saying, I don't see any shapes, I see people. Well, people are shapes, <laughs> um, depending on whether they, you know, and some of them have some form to them. But if you look at this and you see the little red shape, red shape, each head is a shape, their hair is a shape, their, the arms on the chair is a shape, the chairs are shapes, um, his bow tie is a shape, his shirt is a shape, okay? So there's a lot of shapes here. Not very many here. So how this is balanced with, with um, size is that these bigger shapes over here are balanced by smaller shapes here. This makes it heavier when you have a lot of little shapes. But that's just one part of the equation. Now, contour is the next one. And we haven't really talked about contour. So... Oh, and I'm going to do a little picture for this one. So in a composition, if you have a big shape here, you can <coughs> balance it on the other side with little shapes. Okay? Now, contour. And from your book, a complicated... Contour will appear heavier. Some people are not writing down their notes, which is very disappointing to me. I know you can just go copy them off the internet, etc. So, why are you copying these notes now? And, and make you copy them again. That just seems like busy work. Maybe some of you are thinking, I don't know. 
I don't know what you're thinking. But here's what I've learned in the 14 years that I've been at Linmar. I have taught this class for 14 years, and for years, I, I went through this material much quick, much more quickly. I thought that, you know, you'd already had this in elementary and middle school, and I, I just kind of rushed through it. But then when I got to my upper level art classes, and I tried to, um, you know, I would ask them, because this class does, has everything to do with all the other art classes you, you, you might take. It also has to do with your life, but uh, on a, in a bigger sense. But according to art, people would come into my class, and, I, and they'd, they'd present a painting. Let's say they're in a painting class of mine, and they go, you know, and I go, well, you get a C on that, you know. And they go, well, why do I get a C? I like it. And I'd say, well, it's very confusing in what it communicates. There's, there's no unity here, or, um, so it's confusing. Or I'd say there's, there's, con there's no contrast, so it's very boring. So, and they look at me with blank stares and, like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so I couldn't communicate with them about their artwork and how they could improve it. So what I've learned over the years is that in order for you to, to learn this, you have to repeat it. And when I think about my life and how I learn, I have to repeat something. What do I learn? I learn a lot of things, but I, I, learned, I learned new dance moves when I, have, when I do the dance routine or whatever. I don't get it the first time. Okay, a Suzy Q, this is a Suzy Q, all right? I didn't get it the first time I did it. Looks simple enough, and it is <coughs> once you know it. So, what? A Suzy Q, yeah. it's just a fancy stuff in salsa. Uh, salsa. This is the basic. I do salsa. You haven't seen me do salsa? Two, three, five, six, seven, one. I do teach it, yes. Do you have to say, like, other things? Okay. We're getting off task, but the reason why I went into this uh, little uh, um, segue, or not segue, but you know, I went off track a little bit because people weren't taking notes. So I know it's tedious to take notes and then put them in your book, but I find when people repeat, they remember better. And I hear from other teachers that the students that come out of my class know these things. And I, when I first taught it and went through this much more rapidly, they did not know these things. Okay, and you need to understand them to understand art. Okay, end of lecture over. Now, what is a con contour? If this is my, um, we'll kind of we'll kind of look at this stage. Okay, the contour is the line that if you had to outline something, it's the line that goes around it. So this is a bigger space, it's you know, so it's heavy over here because of that. But these contour lines are fairly simple, okay? Where if you start drawing around like this lady's coach, that's a more complicated contour. So it's the line, the outline around whatever shape it is. So to put that in very simple terms, if you have something bigger with a simple contour, if you have things with more complex, this is a more complex contour, it's going to appear heavier. Okay, so that's how you help to, to balance it there. Next thing is color. Okay, so um, So color, there's two things that we want to talk about. It's a couple things. Intensity. And remember, there's value and then there's in intensity. And so um, I would argue that, a, you know, okay, that we've got value as a separate category. So we'll keep that, we'll see, keep that set, separate for our notes. Keep it in line with the book. So color, we talk about value, but we also talk about intensity. All right, so what would, be, what would seem heavier, a bright color or a dull color? Actually, a bright color is going to be heavier. It's going to be something that's going to cap, capture your eye more. So a bright color is 
is going to appear heavier than a dull color. So once again, we're talking about intensity. And then one more, a warmer, cool color. What do you think would be heavier? Okay, I heard both. And in your book, it says, and it is, it is true, that warm, warm colors, okay, so I'm going to go bright colors and warm colors appear heavier. and cool colors. So once again, look at our example here. Um, the, um, the colors over here, that's not a bright purple, is it? Do we see any bright colors on the right? Tell your partners. And you should see me saying, Bright green, there's kind of a bright red. Okay, and then in terms of warm and cool colors, do we see any warm colors on this side? Barely. There's a little bit of yellow on the edge of the um, curtains. What do we see over here for warm colors? Red, 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 okay? She has yellow hair. This is yellow, okay, kind of, sort of. So there's, there's an example of that. Okay, the next one is value. So, um, so um, value has to do with contrast. Ah, spelled it wrong. Value. Okay. Um, and we're going to say, um, dark, what's going to be strong, what's going to be heavier, dark values or light values? Tell your partner. Okay, I heard, did everybody tell their partner? Or heavier? I hear light, I hear dark. In your book it says, and I'm going to agree with your book, uh, dark values, so black's going to look heavier than white, because that's pure, pure value without the colors. Dark values appear heavier than light values. Okay, um, the next one, oh, let's look at the picture again. Okay, um, this is light, right? There's a lot more light on this side of the um, <coughs> picture here, mostly the dark <coughs> values. So that helps to balance it out. Okay, next one is texture. So we've got four kinds of texture, all right, and um, so what, what uh, do you think, we're gonna, just going to talk about um, rough, rough and smooth, what do you think would be up here heavier? Rough, rough good, all right, rough texture. Here's heavier than smooth. <clears throat> and once again, looking at your picture, this is fairly smooth on this side. Her fur coat is pretty rough. There's some texture in the in the um, chairs. So there's a little bit of that too. Not a lot, but some. Their hair is textured. 
um, as opposed to the smooth curtains. Finally, anybody ever ride a teeter-totter? You know what one is? You know what a seesaw is? All right, how many have ever been on a seesaw? What? What's the question? Oh, you can't read it. This? All right, thank you. Okay, how many of you have ridden on a teeter-totter? They're a vanishing breed. You know why? You don't see. When I was growing up, they had them on every playground. Why don't we have teeter-totters anymore? <laughs> yeah, because of litigation. More and more and more and more. When something happens to people, this is one of the ways societies change, they, they sue somebody. Um, so, and it was a little different when I was growing up. So, people, if you fell off the teeter-totter, accidents happen. Now, it's like, let's sue the city. So, here you got your teeter-totter. Now, when I used to babysit, whoopsie, that's a teeter-totter, and here I am, and here is the child that I'm babysitting. Okay, now, whoop, how's that going to work? Oh, I think the child's going to shake. The child's going to be here. Okay, yes. If I do this, the child is going to be, I'm going to go down to the bottom, and the child's up here, right? Okay, whoops, up there. Help, mommy. <coughs> okay, so um, in order to balance that, what would I do? I would have the, ch I would move myself here. And then we could successfully teeter-totter because I counter counterbalance that weight. And you can do the same thing in a composition. The same principle holds for balance. So even though it's not actual weight, this would be me, this would be the child. And then you could go up and down. So that what that means is when you have a composition, A large, a, um, a large area close to the dominant or um, main area, the center area. That's what we mean by dominant. I, I'm going to use that word. You can you can understand that. Dominant area can be counterbalanced, can be balanced, we'll just say balanced, by a smaller object farther away. So quite simply, I'm going to go out of my bubble here because I make up room. If I've got a bigger object here, if I take a smaller object and put it kind of at the edge of the co composition, that will help balance it. That, that, that'll give it more weight over here. Now, do you use these singly? Generally not. Um, there's, um, you know... Usually you're going to use more than one. But here's an example, very famous painting uh, by, um, this is on page 238. It's, it's by Hokusai and uh, Mount Fuji. This is in Japan. It's right here. And you see this great big wave over here. That's kind of dominating the composition, right? So look what they put over here. They put these little boat, this boat coming over here and all these little people to help counterbalance this big wave. Do um, any of you have questions over there? 
again? Yes, you may. Thank you. There's there's some talking going on that really is not necessary and is um, inconsiderate and rude. All right, so those are ways to balance an asymmetrical or informal composition. You don't, won't necessarily use all of these, but these are some of the ways you can actually balance it. So number 37 is going to be a composition composition um, using informal balance. So that means if I have something here on this side that's kind of large, I might have something over here. I don't know what this is, okay? I'm just making this up. These are balls flying through the air. He's throwing a ball. And these are birds trying to catch the ball. This is grass. All right. So that's my gorgeous composition. But that would be an informally balanced composition. Um, I think I'm, once again, this, this, this is a complicated concept. I am going to stop here, and I'm going to, I need to, um,